Viola Rules Reacts here, and welcome to another blind commentary. Today I'm going to be reacting to The Box by Sparrow9642. If you remember a while back, I reacted to another story of his and reading that he did called Welcome to the Family. And I mentioned in that one that it was the sequel, the second one in a um, series of readings that were supposed to go together, The Box being the first. And I swear to you, I looked on Sparrow's channel for the box before I recorded that um, blind reaction and I could not find it. It was only when I was linked to it by the person who voiced the uh, doctor for Welcome to the Family that I was actually um, able to find all four parts of it. I have no idea why, because this, according to this, this reading is only a year old, so it shouldn't have been that hard for me to find on my own, so I probably just wasn't paying attention. But yeah, if you remember the box, Welcome to the Family, they're all tied to this thing called The Survey, um, which I watched by myself, which is another reading and um, story by Sparrow9642. Um, so the box will explain more of the Doctor's origins, because I mentioned that I felt like I was missing information when I was watching Welcome to the Family, so this should fill me in. This has four parts to it. Um, I will watch the first two parts in this one, and then in a separate video, watch the last two parts, um, because it would be way too long to watch all four parts together. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's get the intro for this one. Month of Macabre. Yeah, this was, well, I think still is a thing where during October they do the, um, have a month dedicated to just grimdark readings. A bunch of, um, YouTubers who do fanfic readings do this. Darkness. That's all I saw as I fluttered my eyes open. I couldn't tell if my eyes were even open or closed, nor could I tell where I was. Strangely, I couldn't remember much, except for... Suddenly realization hit me as I remember taking the survey and being abducted by a demented version of Fluttershy. Oh, that's why Fluttershy was shot herself. the intro. Okay. I had been forced into a sick game of life or death and every choice I made had either ended in bloodshed or punishment. Fluttershy had been ruthless throughout the entire survey, forcing her animals to do the unthinkable to people that I cared for, but also did not care for. Okay, so I guess I had it's not guaranteed once, that, um, and as a result of my that Twilight feeling you get, because that's my who the uh, who protagonist of the survey the got, survey is his was pony. mauled to death by Fluttershy's most deadly animal, Harry. I was given an array of questions, and with each question came either suffering from me or my girlfriend. In the end, I had done harm to myself, being forced to cut into my own flesh with the nearby knife I had in my room. I had to spell out the word traitor on my arm and cut deep enough so that the wounds would leave scars. Oh. I had attempted to use my girlfriend as a cover to save my own ass, but Fluttershy put me to the ultimate test. A test of kindness in its own twisted form. In the end, I had failed, and seeing I had enough nerve to use my girlfriend as an excuse to save myself, she was slaughtered before my eyes on webcam. Fluttershy truly had exposed me for who I really was, wow. a lying traitor that would use someone he actually cared for as a cover to save himself. By the end of the survey, I was already broken. And it only grew worse as I was forced I feel to watch like some demented video labeled as Fate.mp4. Okay. In the okay. video, it showed footage of my girlfriend moments before she died. She told me that she hated me and wished only the worst death for me. Mm. I couldn't escape my own true nature, seeing she had every right to hate me because I had gotten her killed. After the survey, I remembered being abducted into some room with close to over a thousand different screens each being other unfortunate victims of the survey. Fluttershy had approached me, telling me that it was up to the other participants to decide my fate. I was expecting certain death, but somehow I had been spared. 
Fluttershy stated that I was not finished and had yet another test to take. After that, I remembered nothing except pitch black darkness. Now I was here, lost in what seemed like endless darkness. But strange enough, I was able to move freely. I was not constricted by any sort of force. I decided to feel around and attempt to figure out where I was. Using my hands, I examined the solid surface I was sitting on. It was cold and hard. It wasn't even hard to recognize as steel. Out of my investigation, the sound of a hiss from within the small box erupted, causing me to jump and immediately panic as I sprawled to my feet and attempted to run. As weak as I was, I could not run fast, but didn't get far, hitting a solid wall yeah, that's what sounded saying, like probably glass. Get far. Not thinking straight, I ran in the opposite direction as fast as possible, until once again I hit another glass wall. I couldn't run to my left or oh, right, I see. so I attempted to glass run box. forward, which came to the same conclusion as before, hitting a solid glass wall. In the darkness, I could not tell which direction I was running anymore, so I pounded against the glass wall, hoping for it to break. The glass was thick, causing my knuckles to start hurting, and sweat start to form upon my forehead. I resulted to shouting for help, only to receive no response, and my own voice to echo within the small enclosure. I continued to pound against the glass, even though it was clear that it was not going to break, as the hissing sound continued to circulate throughout the enclosure. My worst fear was that the hissing noise was some sort of poisonous gas being leached into whatever I was stuck in, oh, I would have thought killing a snake me with each passing you second. Is your problem, okay. The darkness made it even hard to tell if anything was happening. But, I couldn't yeah, see my own hand in front of my face. I couldn't determine where I was, and in that moment, I couldn't tell if my eyes were even open. I continued to that panic as again. I heard the sound of an intercom erupt from within the area. Experiment 1030771, please hold still. Where are you? Where are you? Come out and face me! You can't see anything anywhere. Down, I will have no choice but to sedate you. Fuck you! Experiment is not responding. Commence sedation process. Suddenly, I felt a strong surge of electricity flow throughout my entire body, immediately causing me to collapse to the ground in severe pain from the unexpected shock. I opened my eyes to nothing but pure darkness, confused at first of where I was, until I remembered what had happened. I carefully stood back up, being careful to watch my surroundings even though my surroundings were completely invisible to me. Panic and fear started to overcome my mind, until I heard the same voice within the box again. Do you understand the consequences now, experiment 1030771? I was in no position to argue, so I just nodded my head in response to the unknown voice. Good. Oh. Now that you are calm, allow me to explain where you are. You are in a safe box, protected from any threats outside of the box. Safe box. However, this box is a test of both mentality and sanity. All you have to do in this box is remain within it for a period of four days. But be warned, as I stated, this is a test of mentality and sanity, meaning this test will play tricks on your mind, human. The darkness is both a matter of wonders and mysteries. Can't you just sleep for four days and just, just not do no the human test, has I guess? Never no. this test. So tell me, you. Are you afraid of the dark? My anger was growing massively. Was this unknown voice serious? All I had to do was remain here for four days? That seemed too easy, and the fact that no human had survived the test made me quiver. And, and what, what if, if I, I do survive? survive? You will be free to go. You will be returned to wherever you came from, able to do whatever you wish to do. The reward of the survival made my confidence boost a little bit. If I survived, I could shut down the sick game of madness for good, and all I had to do was sit here for four days. It seemed simple enough, but even I knew that nothing about this sick game was going to be simple. I'll survive your sick game. You bastard will pay for all you've done! We'll see about that. The robotic voice let out a chuckle that made me shake. <laughs> we'll see. Let the test begin. 
Suddenly, the voice cut off, and I was left alone in the never-ending darkness. Just me, the dark, and my sanity. I can do this. I can do this. Little did I know that I was in way over my head, and that my nightmare was just beginning. The test had begun, and seeing I had nowhere to go except for here, I took a seat on the floor of the box. Trying to think of other things besides of what had happened in the past four hours. Thinking of negative things was the last thing I wanted to do right now. Seeing the negativity would add to the creepiness of the environment I was in. Yeah. I didn't know where I was, and it would who had put me here, or if too. I was even alone in the endless darkness. I stopped myself right there, feeling a chill run up my spine. Think happy thoughts, I said to myself, attempting to shrug off the small bit of fear that had corrupted my mind. I was already too late, feeling my body enter a state of insecurity and paranoia. It was true, I had no idea if I was alone, or if the sick bastards that had stuck me in this hell had included any other threats in this hell with me. I stood back up, attempting to listen for any growls, breathing, or the sound of any steps within the environment. The hissing noise within the box made the task impossible, as I debated on moving from my current area. I couldn't see anything, so finding my way around the box was far from possible. As I attempted to listen for anything over the sound of the hissing, I made sure to keep my breathing shallow, not wanting to arouse any sort of attention. If there was anything here except myself, no matter how hard I tried to hear for anything, the hiss made it impossible. Meaning that if I was going to find anything, I had no choice but to move away from the hissing noise. As much as I did not want to move, I had to, so I carefully moved away from the hissing noise with caution. I took baby steps away from the hiss, immediately noticing a difference in volume. The hissing noise became much more quiet as I moved more and more throughout the large enclosure. I took great caution with each step, reaching out with my hands for guidance. The only thing I prayed not to feel was something along the lines of prickly fur or even another human's flesh. The people who threw me in this place were sick and twisted enough to do something that demented, so I just continued to fill around for either a wall or nothing. For a good 20 minutes, I had walked around the box and found nothing up but on blank steel space slab, and four glass right? walls. So, I had not heard anything besides the sound of my own breathing and the heartbeat of the box within my chest. Even though I had no idea where I was in the box, I knew that the theory I had about being locked in here or something else was all but diminished. As I came to a stop within the darkness, I let out a breath of relief, knowing that I was safe within this place, and the voice that I had heard from the intercom was not lying. I shook my head at that theory, realizing what was happening. It was exactly what the voice had stated before. This is a test of mentality and sanity, meaning this test will play tricks on your mind, human. I had been tricked into nearly trusting the people that had put me here. I understood the purpose of me being put into pitch black darkness. It had easily fooled me into thinking that I wasn't here alone. I mentioned and before that you could sleep it still through the task, but now that I think about it, it I'm sure of what other tricks I might fall for it if I didn't keep a level head. This was only day one, and within only 30 minutes, I was already panicking. <sighs> Remain focused. Oh, that's why it's, it's just in a four box. Parts. Nothing more. Each part is one day. Nothing to be scared of. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. Indeed it was. Exactly what these sick people wanted me to know. I just hadn't realized it until just then in the darkness of the box. I didn't know who these people were, where I was, or if I was even safe. All I knew was that if I had any chance of surviving, I had to remain level-headed. Easy enough, right? Wrong. We actually have I opened my eyes, though. only to find myself in my computer desk chair, tied down by rope and unable to move anything except my head. Oh, so it was just a dream I looked around, or something? seeing that I was back in my room. But once I saw the computer screen, I knew I was in danger. Yeah. The computer screen was a familiar sight. A sight I'd never forget. Fluttershy was in the middle of a dark room, humming a tune that had an ambience of happiness and kindness until she turned to the screen to face me. The element of kindness was holding a large knife in one hoof, 
caressing the blade's edge slowly with the other, continuing to hum her tune. Her nice eyes creep. stared into mine as she stared at me with a deadly smile on her face. I struggled with all my strength to get out of the chair, but it was clear that I wasn't going anywhere as Fluttershy began to speak familiar words. Such a shame that someone who grew up such a sweet boy would pull an act of such unkindness. For that, you must be sure that such horrible deeds will not pass. And don't worry, I'll be gentle as possible. At that moment, Fluttershy leaned through the computer Yay. screen, easily passing through the computer screen. Wow. Much like Samara did in the movie The Ring. Fluttershy's appearance had changed from what I saw behind the computer screen. Instead of her eyes being their normal blue color, her eyes had changed into an endless black with her pupils being a single red dot. She looked more evil and demented, but her voice is what added to her character. The voice started out normal, but quickly escalated into something more demonic as she thrusted the knife into my left arm. Mm. The pain was unbearable as she dug deeper and deeper into my arm, nice proceeding to carve a traitor into my yeah, arm. Sure. It was much like before, only with more force and unbearable pain. I screamed for mercy as Fluttershy continued to carve, humming that same tune in the moment of torture. I figured that he'd have fallen asleep, and like I said, sleeping probably won't help. I woke up screaming in the darkness of the box, hearing my echoes scream off at the four walls of the enclosure. Sweat drenched my entire body as I struggled to catch my breath. I inhaled and exhaled long breaths of fear as I stood back up, feeling my heart beat inside of my chest. The struggle to catch my breath continued as my mind came to realization of where I was and that I had just woken up from a horrifying nightmare. I finally managed to catch my breath after nearly a minute of waking up from the nightmare. Sweat dripped from my forehead as I calmed myself to a content level of breathing normal. <sighs> Calm down. Calm down. It was just a nightmare. Nothing more. It was hard to focus in the darkness as I wiped away the large amount of sweat that had been built up on my forehead. I had no idea how long I had slept, nor did I even remember falling asleep. I regained my composure and stood in the darkness, noticing that my throat was awfully dry. I was dehydrated and exhausted. From among the darkness, I suddenly heard a mild giggle, oh, which immediately caused me to jump to caution. I wondered if it was just my imagination. As I carefully navigated through the mass like of that, darkness, um, has the suddenly audio hearing another giggle. Moving around. This time, it was loud enough for me to clarify that this was not my imagination playing tricks on me. Hello? I yelled, immediately noticing something move within the darkness. Whatever had moved was quick, but I swore that I had saw something like a yellow stream within the glimpse of a movement. The darkness made it impossible to tell as I moved deeper into the darkness, hearing something very familiar. It's the tune that was the same was humming. Tune, and it had suddenly made itself known within the box as I muttered out a word without realizing it. Fluttershy? I questioned. The humming just continued as I saw yet another glimpse of yellow closer to me. I attempted to look around, but it was pitch black everywhere I looked. The humming got closer, closer, and closer, until I realized it was coming from right in front of me. I couldn't see anything, but I did see two red dots as she got closer to me. As a defense, I threw punches toward the red dots, Who but did I the hit nothing for except this? Really, space. Really good. The humming grew in volume as I threw fist after fist, to hitting check only the, uh, blank space once afterwards. again. Dead. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead! No. That's all I could scream in my head as the two red dots finally made contact. Unless the other four parts I continued to throw uh, punches as defense, but it was like fighting a ghost. I expected the impact to be my demise, but instead, I felt nothing as I heard the humming tune 
dissipate in the darkness. Was that real? It had to be! I contemplated as I heard the intercom erupt within the box. Day one complete. Day two has begun. With that, the wow. intercom static faded to nothing, and I was left alone again, wondering if what I had saw was real or just some sort of hallucination. I'd never know the answer, because this darkness what was I had managing saw. to do what it was designed for. What I had seen? I could no longer tell what was real and what was just a mind trick. I still had two days to go. Two days of hell. To be continued. Yep. So. Yeah, so let's jump right into part two. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I see why it's called the box, because the protagonist is trapped inside a box, he can't see, and he's slowly going insane. I do like the story so far, it's really, really good. And um, <clears throat> I watch part two in the video, and then do Nothing three and four as the second day in a separate commenced. one, like I mentioned before. Everything still remained the same in the still darkness of the box, with only the sound of the oxygen filter hissing being audible. Oh, it's an oxygen filter. From my filter. point of view, I could hear my breathing and my heartbeat pounding inside of my chest as the time passed. My heart was still pounding, considering what I had just experienced and still was questioning if it was real or just some sort of hallucination. The sight of the red eyes seemed too real to just be a mind trick, along with the humming and the giggles I heard clear as day. The thought of being in a seclusion like this was something I couldn't even defend myself against. It caused my mind to immediately enter a different state of insecurity. I had walked throughout the entire box and found nothing, but I couldn't get it out of my mind that what I saw in the darkness of the box was far from just a mind trick. Was I in here alone? Or was that monster in here with me? I attempted to survey the box, but it was clear that I was only going to <laughs> survey see the, same the box. Side, no matter Get how it? Because the tried. survey started all this. All I saw was pitch black and nothing more. My breathing increased as I felt sweat drip from my brow onto the still floor of the box, listening around for anything in the darkness. I navigated at a much more rapid pace than before, using only the glass walls as my guide, attempting to find if what I had saw was either real or just some sort of an illusion. As I navigated the box, the amount of sweat upon my forehead had increased massively, along with the level of fear. I wasn't sure where I was in the box, or if I was just going in a circle. All I knew was that my mind had entered a state of panic that I could not just shrug off and only increased There's as I heard yet another again. giggle from within the box. The sound of the giggle had caused me to become startled as I turned in the darkness from where I thought I had heard the giggle, hoping to catch whatever was taunting me. I abandoned the glass wall and ran in the direction of the giggle, not knowing what I'd encounter. I ran as quick as I could. But just as I came to the spot where I thought I had heard the giggle, another giggle erupted from another spot within the box. Once again, I ran in the direction of the giggle, only to find nothing but open space once again. The peaks of my anger and fear were at a dangerous peak as I heard yet another giggle, and another, and another. It was then that I realized that the giggle was coming from everywhere within the box. And it I usually don't watch these videos on full screen, but I feel box. like if I was, it'd be a little I bit more. I attempted to plug my immersive. ears, but I couldn't escape the sound that easily. It if you want to go for a full immersion, you can also watch it in the, the dark too. I'm not going thinking. to do that. Anger and fear finally took hold of my sanity, and I broke. Where are you? Show yourself! I shouted attempting to intimidate whatever was taunting me. But instead, the giggling just grew louder and louder. My anger grew, 
as I continued to ramp my voice out to whatever I had managed to stir to life. Show yourself, coward! I shouted in anger once again. Again, there was no response, except for the endless audacity of Fluttershy's giggle as I threw my face into my hands, attempting to shut out the endless echoes of Fluttershy's giggle, but nothing said. My mind began to spin into a spiral of insanity as I heard a voice from among the giggles. Why am I here? Oh. Spoke Fluttershy, caressing my eardrum. In defense, I threw a punch in the direction of the voice, only to hit nothing except a solid plexiglass wall. My entire right fist erupted with a cracking noise at the collision with the glass wall. Broken my entire hand. hand pulsed with pain as I quickly grabbed my right fist, immediately feeling something wet and thick. Blood was leaking from open wounds that I could not see, as I resulted to cussing violently, hearing Fluttershy once again. Such your language! Shame on you! <laughs> she exclaimed as I felt something hit me violently across the mouth. This was no illusion, as I felt blood leach out of my mouth and the taste of iron slither across my tongue. There was something else there, too. Something sharp and hard. It took me a minute to realize it was just a tooth fragment, which I spat out, hearing it hit the steel floor. I, was I still think panic he's fully now, hallucinating continuing to hold this, my right but fist, we'll see. Knowing that I had broke it. The fact that scared me the most, though, was that I had actually felt pain from what I thought was just an illusion, but now knew it was far from an illusion. I was far from alone in this box, and had many things to fear, because I couldn't see or feel them. Seeing that everything I had tried to do to fend off the taunting had failed miserably, I fell to the cold floor and curled into a fetal position, feeling completely helpless. Heavenly Father, thy Lord in heaven, I'm sorry for what I did to Cheryl. I didn't mean to cause what happened to her or any of this. Please, just take care of her. Please, let her know I'm sorry for what I did. Amen. Amen. Amen! I don't I think praying it, will I had started to cry in the help you. Weakness, and only continue to try and shield myself as the torture continued. Please, God, help me, I whispered. But no response came. Hours passed before the laughter of flesh I finally faded away. But I had a feeling it would be back in due time, so I did not get comfortable in the darkness. I was drenched in sweat from a combination of my fear and sadness, as I carefully stood back up, continuing to dress my right fist with my left hand. My entire right fist pounded from the multiple broken bones within the skin, while my left hand became sticky from being drenched in blood from the open wounds. I couldn't move my right set of fingers nor grip anything with my right hand making it nearly impossible to do anything. I guess our character is right-handed. My right hand was my dominant hand, yeah. so it only made sense that I was struggling to do anything. I had lost my best resource for defense, and was an even easier target for whatever else was in the box with me, waiting for the right moment to strike. I didn't dare cuss from the pain I felt, seeing I had already paid the price for that, which was a hoof to the mouth by Fluttershy herself, as I thought of what to do next. I groaned from the pain of my right hand as I resorted to thinking of a way to dress it in the right way. Using my left hand, I brushed my hand against my body, feeling for clothing. I was still dressed in the same thing I had been in at the start of this nightmare, a simple t-shirt and my gym class shorts. I could only imagine what they looked like now, covered in blood from the punishment flesh I gave me for betraying Cheryl and my broken hand wounds. Without wasting any time, I gripped a nice handful of my shirt cloth and ripped the content with a hard tug. I quickly turned to wrapping my right fist as best as I could in the pitch black, letting out small groans of pain whenever I hit a sore spot. I tied the cloth around my hand, applying pressure to the wounds while not doing any other additional damage. As soon as I felt confident I had tied it tight enough, I returned to wondering what to do next. I didn't dare sleep due to what had happened the last time I had accidentally fallen asleep. 
I decided to just remain where I was. But at the same time, no sleep will also lead to sanity deterioration. I just attempted so. to find a happy place, despite all that happened here in this hell. I was exhausted. I could tell from my body feeling heavy and my strength being very weak. Standing up straight was hard enough, along with keeping my eyes open, even though I could not tell if they were opened or closed. For support, I leaned against the glass wall, trying to keep myself stable. My mentality was slipping away, and I could feel it. I had physical and mental pain from something I thought was just an illusion, but it was clear that whatever was here with me was far from an illusion. I don't know. Tactile hallucinations do exist, so... I can't let her get me. Who knows? Maybe he's not even For really moment, bleeding. I don't know. That could be a hallucination, too. Until I felt a sudden impact against the glass wall. Who knows? Along with the ground that made my blood run cold. The impact against the glass was strong enough to make me fall to the floor and struggle to get back up. However, once I saw what was against the glass, I debated on even standing back up. What do you mean, saw what was against the glass? A pair of hooves scrambled glass. along the outside surface, leaving blood with them. But that wasn't what scared me. The noise that unknown creature was making along with its endless persistence to get through the glass is what made me shudder. The noise was somewhat human, but demented in a twisted manner. I wondered if what I was hearing was human, or a twisted monster. I couldn't move as I sat frozen in place by the sight of the unknown being on the other side of the glass. Somehow I had regained my senses and quickly scurried as far from the creature as possible, watching as those hooves continued to scratch against the glass wall. I didn't yell or scream as I continued to listen to the creature. I swore I could hear the words, help me, within the cryptic noises the creature made. But it couldn't be speaking human, unless it were. It hit me, as I cowered once again. Cheryl? Now I knew what happened to the corpses of whoever ended up dying in either the conclusion of the survey or this test. They became pawns in this game of insanity, and never move on. This is what would happen to me if I didn't make it. I'd become one of whatever had called out to me outside of the box. Over the ambience of the creature and the darkness of the box, I passed out again. Oh, we have another dream sequence. Oh, nope. A massive surge of electricity is what woke me from my short sleep. Why did as they I opened shock my him? eyes to darkness and silence. I was angry and exhausted as I stood up again. What was, what was that, that for? for? I yelled angrily. No response came, infuriating me even more. I knew they could hear me, and I wasn't going to be ignored. As I, 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 I think about it, it's probably a good thing that he's not on the uh, metal table anymore. I was beyond the peak of my anger. That electricity was really hurt. Once he again. was. My breathing was heavy well, as I resulted to screaming again, in that anger and the steel in the slab face wasn't, re times, wasn't referring to the floor. Blood each time. No response came as I fell to the floor on both knees. I continued to punch myself violently. Um, After multiple minutes think... of my outrage, I lost all sense and held my head tight. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy! Says the person who just punched I himself. feeling myself fall to a new level of insanity. I stared at the glass wall, covered in blood from the creature, seeing a reflection of myself. You need to calm down, spoke the reflection. <laughs> How can I be calm when I'm being watched by monsters? There's nothing here. To just believe there is, when there isn't. What the fuck do you know? You are losing it. Exactly what they want. Can't you see that you are falling for their scheme? <laughs> I'm losing it? Yep, and I'm only on day two. It. I'm not losing it. You are. You are just here to make me believe that there's nothing here. I've seen it. I felt it. This is not fake. This is real. You aren't real. Get out! I'm what you've lost. And unless you get a fucking grip, you'll lose full grip on reality. 
You'll never survive here unless you listen to me. It felt like my mind was spinning as I struggled to hold myself together, feeling tears form in my eyes. The reflection's words continued to repeat in my mind as I finally resulted to screaming so loud that it shook the room and shattered the glass walls protecting me from the outside threats. Wait. That's not good. Also, assuming this box has a top, um, try not to get cut. I panicked as I heard something approach from the darkness and quickly pinned me to the ground. Whatever had me was strong and massive inside as I felt the breath of the creature blow against my face. Out of the darkness, the face of the creature manifested before me and what I saw made me nearly collapse to tears. Before me was a monstrous creature, but the eyes were all but familiar, as I recognized them as Cheryl's eyes. Ah. Sh Cheryl? I questioned. The creature just smiled a row of jagged teeth before it lunged down at me with its mouth wide open. Payback! My eyes shot open so is this another as I dream, struggled to or... regain control of myself, yeah. hearing the intercom erupt above me. Day two complete. Day three has begun. Spoke that same robotic voice. Congratulations, human. You've made it farther than any other victim has. My anger grew with the sound of the voice taunting me, seeing I was just a suffering animal in a cage to them. One day remains before I take you down for good, I spoke angrily. The robotic voice laughed at my confidence. <laughs> I can assure you that you will never make it past a good day, human. Your body is slowly breaking, and you've already lost all grip on reality. Besides, the body can't survive without a critical resource past two days. Food? Suddenly, I realized what the Water? voice was referring to due to my throat feeling like I had swallowed sand. So, humans have no chance at surviving at all, seeing you just leave them without water for four days. That's a cheap win. I spoke angrily. Right, you can go for months no. without food, but... Little do you know that your resource exists within the box, but only if you are smart and bold enough to perform the needed actions will you find the resource. Oh. I thought hard about what the voice meant. But once I found where the resource existed, I immediately fell to panic. I see you figured it out. Are you willing to puncture your own flesh and treat your own blood to survive? Oh, God. Even if you do, you must be careful on where you puncture, or it can end fatally. I swallowed uh, hard, realizing okay, that the then. voice was right. I needed water, and 90% of the human's body weight comes from water within the bloodstream. Could I do this? No, I had to do this. With as much boldness as possible, I took a deep breath and I bit as hard as I could into my left arm that I had unfortunately oh. carved into for the night, being careful not to go too deep or puncture an artery. I screamed as I heard the flesh tear, and the taste of iron began to taint my tongue. It tasted disgusting, but I had no choice but to do this. As I bit deeper into Well, oh, I guess he doesn't have use of um, blood was all either I taste of his as limbs, I, my I guess, out of his my arms. Flesh. I pressed my mouth down on the open wounds. I sucked the blood from my open wounds as if I were drinking through a straw, feeling the hot, thick, and bitter contents slither over my tongue and down my throat. I quickly adapted to the taste of the blood, making it easier to drink, and almost immediately I could feel a difference in my body's strength. I hadn't okay. drank anything in three days or ate anything, so this was my first serving of something in a long while. I did my best to enjoy it, expressing a look of disgust at who or whatever was watching me. The intercom felt to okay, silence. Okay, well, try not to bleed to out drink. in case you um, one day remained, just one punctured day. something. Little did I know that one day was farther away than I could ever imagine. I had already fallen to insanity, and whatever would follow in the third day was going to test me beyond any bit of sanity that I had left.
I had lost every bit of sanity that I had. To be continued. Okay. Wow. This story is really good so far. I love Sparrow stories. They're great. Um, so, yeah, so like I, as I thought, each part represents one day in the cycle. Um, so I'll do part three and four in the next one. Um, so if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like. Also, be sure to like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter as well as support my Patreon. All three links will be in the description below. And subscribe for more. And if you are subscribed or a new subscriber right now, be sure to hit that bell icon so you get notified when I upload videos. This is Viola Rules Reacts, signing off. Talk to you later.